I'm interviewing cosplay prop maker uh, Jello Grayson. So I'm in front of his condo. I shall knock and we'll check out the stuff that he has. Hey! Okay, Jello. Hey, man. All right, let's go. This is Hi. Oh. Cute <laughs> Guys, I'm with uh, Jello Grayson here, awesome crafter, cosplay, uh, cosplayer as well. Yes. And part of the Geekology video series. So you know, I did, I did. I was lucky enough to have two books done, and now we're working on the third one. Hopefully, we'll watch it soon. As part of that, I'm featuring crafters, makeup artists, post-production guys, and everybody who I collaborate with for and you know, for most of these uh, cosplay images. So yeah. this is where all the magic happens. Nice, nice. So a lot of my works, they come with this little workbench right here. Uh -huh. And um, this is where all the fun happens too. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. What are your tools of the trade? Like um, what are the stuff that you usually use for, no, for, for prop making? For prop making, you know, um, you can never go wrong with a really nice sharp exacto knife. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. use it for everything from foam, warbler, anything. Uh -huh. And another important thing to have is going to be this heat gun. Of course, a heat gun. Tama, this for war blood, they about to warm up war blood to bend it. Tama, tama. Yeah. We'll talk about more of that later. It's always been such an interesting material to work with. Yeah, I mean, oh. well, the tools to get you to start telling is really just your exacto knife. Even a craft knife is fine. Hmm. Um, your heat gun. Let's see what else. Paint brushes. We got all of them right here. Pegboard. Hey, tama. Ooh, like this is also super important because before I usually just have everything on the table. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's horrible. I couldn't find a thing. <laughs> now that we actually thought about designing. Creating a workshop. A little workshop for you. Yeah, nice. Cool. Everything is just like, I want to pick something up. Yep. Like, actually, yep. I like this baby. This is my Dremel. Okay. That I've been using for years. Okay. I could just use it like right now. It's already plugged in. Mm. Nice. And if I okay. don't want to use it, Put it, it down there. Here, you know, it's not somewhere that's gonna, you know, kalat, kalat and all. Okay. <laughs> Which also, by the way, his workshop doubles as his room. Bedroom. Yay! So yes. Work, sleep, sleep. sleep. work, sleep. Yeah. So no. the life of a crafter. So okay, let's uh, let's start with some basic stuff, uh, Jello. How did you begin? How did you like ended up uh, doing doing props and costumes? Long story short, I used to do it after office hours. Okay. And um, so you had a day job. I had a day job. All right. Well, you, had a, you, had, you had a corporate job. Yes, I did. How long was that? That was two years. Two years, straight yeah. off college, straight off work, yes. straight off school. You did, and you had a, you okay. kept a day job. All right. Mm -hmm. And like, um, usually after after hours, I'd be like after work, I go home and I make stuff for my friends. I see. And that's how it all started. Creating costumes like these, I mean, this didn't come from out of nowhere, lang. I mean, you, I'm sure you cosplaying, because for us, it's a love of uh, love of characters of um, either video games, comics, or anime. Yeah. So, I mean, what got you into this? Like, what was like what was the inspiring piece of intellectual property? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, if anything. I started with Nightwing. <laughs> Nightwing, hence, hence the cosplay name Grayson. Grayson. There you go, awesome. Uh, that's why I like keeping this um, emblem emblem over here. My my friend. Yeah. Nice. And, um, nice. Okay. So that's you were so you were pretty much uh, comic was it? Was it uh, comic books? I mean, Din was the one. My my sister Dinny Grayson uh -huh. was the one who does most of the comics, and I was like, hey, who's this Nightwing guy? He looks nice. And she was like, no, that's my husband. Wow, my ganon, my ganon, my ganon, what? No, no, you could ask Denny about that. Well, <laughs> that's on another video, guys. Denny's at work yeah, right sure. now, so I'm just, you know, I'm just going to be in the workshop today. So, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so, uh, so you saw that off your sister's uh, mm -hmm. fandom, yes. which is she's into comics, pala. then you picked up, oh, wow. What was the first prop you made? The first prop I made was basically just a mask. A mask? Yeah. I mean, that what? Made out of paper. Okay, that's funny because it's one of those paper masks that you could buy in a national book store. Okay. The 50 peso ones. It's actually oh, a okay. Yeah, 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 okay. And what you do is you get your pen and then just draw it. Draw the mask on. After oh. that, you just cut it out. Paint it black. It's going to be fit to your face. Interesting. Wow. Very, okay. very fast, very quick and dirty. How much was the mask? 50 pesos. 50 pesos. Wow, so you got the biggest one. 
this is how we started. 50 peso masks in national bookstore. Guys, don't, I mean, if people think that you know crafting is all oh, all these beautiful tools, all these beautiful hardware, stuff like that. No, no, start it's with cardboard, guys. Cardboard, <laughs> tama, and it really gets down and dirty. It's sometimes literally. Yeah. Uh oh. All right. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> I know. Oh. There's still paint there. Oh wow. How did that progress? So you started with paper. What was what pushed you to make? What was the next material to work with? Money. The next one was foam boards, basically styrofoam uh -huh. with a paper on top. <laughs> it was actually um, after uh, that, that was some that was an okay material. That's what my Django Fett helmet was made of uh -huh. until now. Oh, I don't know my old my first one. And actually, we found that this material is just paper on top. We only found it late. And then we progressed to this thing called um, foam rubber sheet. Yeah, this is EVA. 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 Yes. EVA. What is EVA? EVA is basically the floor mats that you see in your in the hardware store or on my workshop floor. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, wow. All I right. Actually so have most of the jigsaw mats. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. EVA. This is it. So if you guys are going to the hardware store, you'll find most of these, and you'll see this a lot of children's playground. Exactly. Uh oh, okay. I, I consider my my room as a playground. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> so this is a playground, black playground. Uh, now, okay, EVA foam I hear is the, the you know the material of choice for a lot of the cosplayers. Why? Because one, it's very flexible. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see here, this is one of the thick. This is quite a thick piece, but this is a very light, very flexible, especially if you mm -hmm. want to do curves. Mm -hmm. And um, another reason why they do it is well, well it's. One is cheap here. Oh, uh, you buy it in Marikina for um, much, much cheaper than you could buy it in the hardware store. Yes, 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 yes. And it's very forgiving, actually. Okay. Um, for example, this one. Um, this is a Diva from Overwatch. It's the start of the collar. Yeah. All right. So okay, I'm curious, Jello. How, for example, you mga cuts in, How do you know it's made to go round the neck? Because okay. without creating, you know, say sometimes if you cut the mats again, then mali yung mali yung ikot niya, then you know you're gonna oh. end up having like I don't know a, a different shape rather than a round neck. Okay, so um, one of the first methods that I employed was I actually got my mannequin and um, I put masking tape around the neck part. Okay, so well when I did that, it actually effectively makes like this template pattern. You take the entire neck. And then you have to run seam lines where it should go. Uh, let me just show you an example of that, especially here. This um, helmet that I'm making is a space helmet, mm -hmm. my own concept. But as you can see, this is how the compound curves are made. So once that is done, I'll cut these out, I'll put them on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And after I put it on a piece of paper, I'll put it on foam. After I put that on foam, I put it back together. So it's back and forth, back and forth. Back. Ah, so it's like creating like a positive, negative, positive, negative mold. Exactly. Something like that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. very much like that. Yes. Nice, nice. <laughs> Alright, so okay. Um, One thing I noticed also with EVA foam, it's quite porous. It is. Oh porous. It, so I would imagine it eats up a lot of paint. It does. So how do you how do you get around with having your cost, especially yeah. I know your Genji. Yes. But it's pretty glossy. So. How do you get around the painting issue? Oh, painting. Um, one of the most popular methods here in the Philippines is um, this thing called acrylic emulsion. Now, mm. I don't see this emulsion. Being, okay, tama. I don't see this being done. It's a. It's such a construction term. Exactly. So you really have to learn you from. So so learning from basic cardboards, EVA foam. You are now touching into hardware. Really, like really. really. It's, uh -oh. it's all about looking for what works and what doesn't. Uh -oh. And it, it's, it's a whole process. Okay. So going back to um, acrylic emulsion, if you see my walls like over there, mm -hmm. the reason why it's glossy is because of oh, the emulsion. Yeah. Tama, exactly. So what they put on top of skim coat and other cement yes. finishes. If you guys are curious to all those who yung emulsion na yan, punta ka sa Starbucks. <laughs> yan yung makikita mo sa pader nila, yung cementadong ano, yung cementadong makintab. Yan yun. That's, that's emulsion for you. If you want to see how the consistency of this, Check it out. It's, it's a lot like milk. This is what I do. I use a flat brush, uh -huh. something like this, uh -huh. and I, I put very light coats on it. Okay. The reason why you want to go light is because it's due to the fact that if you go, go heavy, it's going to start pooling in the places where you don't want it. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Right. So after you put the emulsion yeah. in, so it basically covers up the pores of the rubber. Exactly. And then from there, you paint on top. That's right. Oh. So 
So guys, after the time lapse, I, we now have Genji on a stand with Jello putting on the forearms. Because he puts on the costume, it will take how long? <laughs> Maybe 20 minutes. 20 minutes. But what's that? Okay, explain to us. Because Genji is like your work in forever work in progress, it's, right? It's so my one show now. Yes. <laughs> so explain to us the parts. Nya. How did you come up with this? Okay. Most of this is made out of craft foam, actually. So the same eBay foam that I was talking about a while ago. And um, the interesting thing about these parts, um, what do you call it? I bought neoprene fabric, mm -hmm. and then I had it silk screened by somebody. And after which I had to rugby it on the side, and after which airbrush. All right, so I'm going to the white parts that we see over here, um, and some of the black parts actually. Um, these have all been um, primed with the acrylic emulsion that we discussed, and that was about ten layers or something. <laughs> um, wow, we goes crazy. I go crazy with acrylic emulsion because I want it to be super nice and shiny. These forearms are actually a year and a half old. I mean, they're beat up, yes, but they're, they're still shiny. They're still shiny, exactly. Still shiny. Oh my, oh my. Kind of reminds me, you know, the, the arm for the forearm reminds me of a Macross Mecha. YF19, it's like that. Don't tempt me, Jay. It's <laughs> <laughs> Macross Mecha. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so um, neoprene. Interesting neoprene. choice because I also suggest Neoprene also it's of our cosplay shoots. Oh example why neoprene? Neoprene one because it's nice and thick actually. It just looks good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Plus uh, for those who are curious guys, neoprene is the same stuff that you use for wetsuits. Yes, yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's why it's gonna be so hot because you're it's not. It's hot, it doesn't breathe, <laughs> but makes you look good. It you. Yeah, right. that you know what cosplayers. Tis ganda. <laughs> <laughs> wait, so wait, so you told me that uh, no, wait, the EVA foam, what about the chest part? So you've been working on an interesting fab, uh, interesting material, sorry, deep fabric, material called Warbla. So yes. that's Warbla. We'll get more into that. Also, how did you light this up? Light, lights are actually um, LED strips. Probably the easiest way to light up a costume because um, all you need to do is solder your positive and negatives to a 9 volt battery. You're good. You don't have to mm. think about your uh, resistors or anything. Well, it's straight up now. Exactly. All, all the circuit is all straight up. Nice. Mm. Um, but I am. I am actually. I actually do want to learn a little bit more about you know, how, how to program the lights, how to electronics you know, and all that. Electronics. It's, good. it's still a learning process. Nice. Can you show us where the batteries are hidden? Oh yes. Um. Okay. So I've seen them. They're here. Oh, huh? there's yes. somewhere there. We got yeah, one, two. two. Oh, it's on the thighs. Hip. Thighs. Gotcha. We got two on the shoulders. <laughs> Okay. Um, it's hidden over there. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Right. We have the one here under this. Um, no, I can't take this out. I, you have to put the battery from mm, inside. Inside, gotcha. Okay. And um, there's another one in the helmet, and there's another one here in the neck piece. The reason why I have so many batteries is the first DNG that I made had wires going here and here, and whenever I had to do a pose like that, mm -hmm. it just snaps. It snaps off. I so guess. I was like, let's just have one circuit. Piece. I mean, I'll be spending more on batteries, but... At least you won't be ending up repairing most of them. No, especially yeah. if you're gonna go for a photo and be like, Oh no, take this side! Oh, I better. Flop. And then I have to like, oh, this doesn't look like a good shot. Yeah, 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 I see. Okay, so let's uh, let's dive to that new, uh, that other material, Warbla. What, uh, how, how did you get to work with Warbla? It was, it's a pretty new material. Still pretty new. It's still pretty new, no? Especially here in the Philippines, not too many crafters have adapted it, but I've seen a... Um, I, I know a couple of people who have used it and used it beautifully. Yes, and a lot of notable cosplayers internationally use Warbla. That's so true. Yeah, back it. Uh, what's, what's with Warbla? One, it's very easy to mold. Okay, um, if you've ever seen somebody make a fondant cake or a sugar cake and they want to make a sculpture out of it, that's exactly what it is. It's basically plastic fondant. Oh, if I had to put it very simply, I think we could do a little demonstration. Okay, 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 a bit, yeah. It's just hot plastic that you can mold to whatever shape or form you want. Oh, so it's so Warbla is basically more of a plastic than a rubber thing. That's true. It's very clay-like actually. Mm. You can grab like your Warbla scraps and then um, put them together and ma mash them mash together. together. You have clay. Nice. So where where can you get Warbla? Um, my local supplier, um, the Avery Cosplay. Uh, oh wow. Okay. All right. And um, she uh, supplies Warbla to some of us crafters. And oh wow! 
Uh, she has, there are different kinds of warbler actually. There's clear warbler, there's um, translucent, uh, pearly art warbler, there's the black warbler that I love. Right. So what happened was your Genji lost a finger. Yes, during the a last finger segment. Con. Wow. Um, we were at ESGS and um, without me knowing, um, it, dropped. it just fell. Kind of oh. So okay. what we're gonna do now is we have a treat for you. We're gonna show you how warbler works. Mm. So um, I cut a little piece of warbler from my little roll over here, mm -hmm. and what we're gonna do is we're going to stretch it over this um, this part that I made. Okay, okay. that's so the mold. This is less. the mold that I made. Um, this is not usually how warbler is used, but I was like thinking, hmm, people use make Star Wars armor using vacuum form. What if I use this, but you know, without the vacuum? Mm -hmm. I'll show you. <laughs> okay. Wow. Heat gun. Okay, so this heat gun, not a hair dryer. <laughs> Definitely not a hair dryer. <laughs> You're gonna burn your hair. Nah, man. Go, let's go for it. So, I use the high, there are two settings for the heat gun. There's the low, low heat setting. We got the high. Mm. I put it on high because I'm always in a hurry. I don't know why. <laughs> There, then we put the other half. Oh, the so it's already bending, huh? Yeah. See? Um, let me let me heat it up. Mm -hmm. Nice. So on top of that. See, oh, this is what wow. I mean by like it's fondant. So um, wow. actually, good thing I have water here. Uh -huh. this. All right. So what I do is because it gets really hot. I uh, dip my fingers in water and I stretch it over. As you can see. It's already forming to the thing that I'm molding. I have my sculpting tool, which is a miniature katana. <laughs> is it really a toy or really a tool? It's 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 a it was a keychain given to me by my friend. Tiba yung ang keychain na yun So it's it's nice and hot. So what I do, I push everything into the crevices, and then up. Oh, I think it got too cold. Mm. <laughs> it got too cold. I'm gonna heat it up again. And for our next tasty video. Yes! <laughs> yes! There we go. Okay. So the mold is the important part to do first before you wrap anything around Warbla with. Exactly. Another technique that you could use actually is you could make a craft foam um, part and then you could just wrap it in Warbla. And that actually gives it double stability. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, um, uh, what's this? But that's nice and strong. Honestly, that's another reason why I use warbler over anything. Oh, okay, going back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So once that's okay, that's not gonna take too long actually. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be really need this warbler treatment, especially if I make buckles. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I make a buckle out of um, craft foam. After which, that's when I wrap it around in warbler. That way, my cost, the my client can actually use it as a real buckle, and then it won't break. Oh, so nice. that's very important. Nice to know. So here's the magic. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna pull this up. So get a little difficult. Place. There we go. There we go. Oh, uh, there. Okay, gotcha. There. Nice. So you got the shape you already. Got the shape, and you cut it up. The only thing we do, yeah. The only thing we need to do is cut. Um, regular pairs of scissors can, can do it now. Just your regular um, good pair will do, but sometimes if it's, it's a little too thick. Thick and some parts I just grab my my exacto knife and I just not that much if I may shoot with my trusty exacto knife. <laughs> no one. Uh -huh. Now we can do some more cutting. There we go. Of course um, I'll be painting this later on, but let me show you how this fits. And the nice thing about this method is you could have, yeah, I have uniform, uh, there's going to be uniformity in each of the parts. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have if you want to make robot hands. Robot hands. Yes, yes. And the beauty of using gloves as a base for your uh, robot hand gloves is you can just hot glue it onto your glove and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, as seen here, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. But that's probably my fault. I didn't glue it as well. Hmm. Not enough glue. Yes. But oh, there I'm gonna find this later. But yeah. But let's see Good. how it fits now. So I got yeah. this glove. Then, oops. Right. 
It's right there. I will refine it definitely, but look how it's like a glove. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry for the pun, guys. That's fine. I love puns. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There we nice. go. Nice. All right. Cool. Galing. Galing. Thank awesome. you. Nice. Where do you see um, in the cosplay scene here in the, in the country? Where do you see it going from? You know, from in, in the next few years. Next few years. Um, at least, honestly, I think we're just gonna have some more. Um, more products available for us. Mm. Cosplay industry-wise, I think we're just going to a more accessible. Cosplay is going to be more accessible. Mm. Anybody can put up. Can, anybody can cosplay. And us crafters, we're just going to get better. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think that way, I mean, people are going to see, oh my God, these guys are great at cosplay. Maybe we, we can do it for film, for TV, we can do it for. So eventually, you're like seeing that. this as uh, more than just a fan part. You eventually end up doing stuff for industry. Like, I think that's something that... I think that's a natural... For me, also, first of all, that, that becomes a natural progression. When you do something like this, you do it to a level that it might you might end up contributing to the very creators, you know, to the creator side that you've been a fan of. Yeah, that's yeah, so so that completes the entire cycle. So it's full, circle. Yeah, full circle. Full yeah. circle, yeah. Nice, galing. Tips for would-be crafters. Would-be crafters. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one, just get, get off your bed, start making something. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be really nice. The first prop I made was um, Yuna's gun out of folder cardboard. That was back, back, way, way back then, and I was so pleased with it. I was, I was a kid. And I was like, okay. hmm, wow. Okay. okay. I was like, okay, that's a good start. And from there, that's what I wanted. Okay. All right. Good. Another thing is immerse yourself with different techniques, uh, different techniques that could uh, just, just keep on learning. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, one of the things that really helped. Scale modeling yeah. is definitely a big help when it comes to you know making all these props. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, it gives you the discipline, it gives you to make things highly detailed, uh -huh. and um, mm -hmm. if, if anything, gives you that yeah, the, gives you that eye for detail. Yeah. So Always that's why the devil is in the details. Exactly. Uh -huh. So like that's that's one. You could also look at um, the podcast. Just just um, just consume information about mm. what you love doing and. Mm. I think that's just gonna follow through. Galing, galing, galing. You know, so wait, how do they find you? Like if they're gonna have a costume done or <laughs> yes. you know, something. So, plug away. I shall plug. Go to Jello Grayson on Instagram. Okay, that's one of my main Instagram. Platforms. Okay, all right. Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, also Jello Grayson. Mm -hmm. I still don't have a YouTube, yeah. but Facebook, but Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, that's YouTube coming soon, soon. That's and soon. I'm planning to stream some of my craft. I've done it on Instagram. Uh -huh. If you guys want to join in the stream, um, just follow follow my pages. Nice. All right. Galing, galing, dude. Nice. Awesome. No all right. So more of these videos later on. So I'll be talking to crafters, uh, makeup artists, post production guys. How we come up with a cosplay image. All right. Only here on Geekology, the video series, or whatever, Geekology TV, or whatever you want to call it, Black. So hit like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Yeah, that's my shameless plug. Till the next video.